Hi, welcome. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the 2020 intake that uh, I designed in some earlier videos. Um, I figured this video would um, provide a little bit of a like faster version of stuff instead of having to watch through like two and a half hours of stuff to um, kind of learn whatever see me piecemeal put together all the different design elements of this. Um, this little bit faster video can talk about uh, what I think are the important elements of this intake and um, like in some of the stuff about that. Um, so first thing I wanted to talk about is this um, this bar right here, the what I called in those videos a beer bar. Um, so the point of this bar right is to avoid a really specific mode of failure uh, that I actually uh, 2020 ran into last year uh, with our intake, uh, which was basically we didn't have a bar like this, um, and we never actually had one throughout the entire season. Um, but in testing, we ran our intake full speed into a rocket uh, at home and basically just like completely crumpled one of our Versa rollers, right? And that's not a fa failure mode that would be exclusive to Versa rollers. Uh, that's a failure mode that you'd run into with a hex shaft too. It's just like you run the robot into something really fast and stuff starts bending. Um, so the reason that we have this is basically so that this will take that impact um, because it's a lot easier for us to just go in and um, drop this bar out than it is to drop out like a sensitive motion component. Um, uh, also, just because this has angles, it's a little bit stronger against th those kinds of impacts. Um, so that's what this that's what this bar is for. Uh, it also has a nice side effect of keeping these plates at a similar spacing uh, during assembly. Uh, so like one of the things I might have done if I had spent a little bit more time with this is thrown a bar maybe up here-ish a little bit. Um, and those are nice because then you can, uh, or I might have done something similar to like uh, uh, Spectrum's dead axle roller, or 33's dead axle rollers, um, where those are structural. Um, and stuff like that is nice because... Um, Keeping that independent of this is nice because that lets you like assemble the frame before you assemble all the motion components, um, which is awesome uh, and is just it's nice for assembly. Um, but it's by no means like required. Like it's fine. This is going to be a bit floppy of an intake, but um, that like usually an intake doesn't need to be super rigid. Um, so. One of the other things that we want to talk about is this four bar act and kind of why why was it even worth it for us to design this little this linkage here um and the main reason that i would say it's worth it and why i liked doing this um is because if you notice like how this fits into the entire design when this is so when this is out um it's just like a normal intake but when it's retracted it actually keeps the ball like balls can't escape from this hopper right um, when this is retracted uh, this is like one of the number one issues that i noticed with uh 2020s intake which otherwise was really i was really happy with it this year uh, was basically if you're moving around a ton uh, and you have an open topped intake uh, sometimes balls bounce around and bounce out of the robot or get into places you don't want them to be um, so this lets us keep that constrained um, especially when you don't necessarily have room, if you don't have room for five balls inside of your uh, like shooter lead up area, ball tower. Uh, one of the things I tried with this that I, I really like, um, that I've been really liking as I've been playing with this off season is using the Neo 550 and ultra planetary um, combination. Uh, I just like, look at how tiny this is. like. This is like two inches shorter than a seven seven five pro plus um versa planetary, which is what I would have put here previously um, 
I just I love how tiny this is. I love how light this is. Um, I this is like probably what twenty two twenty will do in the future, assuming that we like have money to buy a bunch of neo a bunch of neo five fifties uh, and associated controllers. Uh, kind of related to that, this is a really cool feature of those neo five fifty of that ultra planetary actually, um, which is the whole pattern on this like. Whole patterns for assembly are fantastic. Like, I love having a whole pattern here um, because X, like, it's just it's just a very robust connection to this gearbox. Um, it makes me feel not at all not at all bad about avoiding having a uh, bearing on the other side. Like, this is just that's a really solid connection. Um, I think I said in the video, like in the video where we designed this bit, some people are really like iffy about M3 screws. M3 screws are great. M3 screws are really durable, especially when you chuck. This would actually be five of them because this one should be here. Um, like you chuck five of them on there, like they're steel. They're 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 not going anywhere. Um, they're great. Um, and then this little derived pulley is also fantastic. I. Love those MK cab pulleys. Um, almost everything in 2220s of 2220s belts, other than like the drive train, was printed this year. Uh, so for this, I chose to use Versa rollers. Um, Versa rollers are great. Uh, we've been using we used them this year uh, on 2220. We used them last year on a robot. Um, they're just great. They're they're robust. Uh, you cover them with surgical tubing and they will grip anything. Uh, if you aren't like doing centering on an intake, um, like you're not using vectored intake wheels or something, um, highly recommended, like highly recommended to use um, Versa rollers. It's just, it's easy to work with even if you don't have a shop, like pretty much the only fancy tool you need uh, is you should have some comp compressed air to put on the surgical tubing. Um, and other than that, like you can do these this with hand tools and it's fantastic like when i was a student you had to do custom laved parts to make rollers and it was just a whole thing and now it's like 30 bucks of parts at vex pro to do the same thing <laughs> which is absurd um these could be dead axle ones i didn't do them that way just because i didn't want to try too much new stuff in one design um that has the benefit of them being structural, which may or may not be necessary, um, but you don't like really need those to be. Um, you notice like this entire thing is made out of polycarb. I love polycarb for intakes. Um, people like there's kind of two philosophies of intakes that I've noticed in FRC um, that are like distinct design philosophies, which is either you like crazy overbuild them, like uh, sorry, um, you, you overbuild them like out of just a bunch of heavy duty aluminum and design them to be just a tank. And like, if I run this into something that something else is going to break, uh, or you just make them super floppy and um, throw them out of uh, polycarb and just assume that it's going to get hit and that that's fine. <laughs> and that's, that's generally my preference on, on stuff like this is to make them really floppy. Um, and this wouldn't even be that floppy. Like these arms are the floppy bit. Uh, quarter inch polycarp is not as floppy as people say it is. Um, in general. Also, I love doing these because like twenty two twenty has a CNC router, um, an Omeo, and like cutting polycarbonate is like cutting butter for us. Like we just throw that in as fast as the CNC router can go, crank it up, and like these parts would take us like whatever it, it would take us more time to set up these parts than it would for us to um actually assemble anything uh like for, for sorry for us to actually machine them like the, the setup would be more expensive for us uh which is great uh i did want to talk about these pivots because these pivots are just like a bad idea um these pivots are like a thunder hex axle with no spacing between these 
bushings and just like i guessing that somebody probably would watch this and be like why did you do this and i'm like ah, well because i was going fast and because that's what i thought about doing at the time um and you often do that in frc um but i want to call this out because like no don't do this this is a bad idea um in reality i'd probably do this as like maybe a shoulder bolt with bushings like there's no reason for us to make a little custom uh thunder axe that's my actual that's my biggest issue with this is that it has like a thunder hex axle that we had to cut like i would much rather this just be like 100 percent tots um because that's going to make our life easier when we assemble this um let's just make that fully tots parts and right now it has a custom custom bit and some like frc custom parts that are pretty cheap but like still um also down here like just i wouldn't do this i would do this with a washer instead um instead of a big 3d printed part there um, like it's not going to be the end of the world to do it that way but still uh just calling that out there um so one of the things i did want to show off a little bit is that belt path planning not the belt path the ball path planning so i didn't like spend a huge amount of time um on this ball path basically because it was really similar to one that i've already done um the big thing when you're designing this kind of ball path like you know it's like i didn't put balls up here i didn't put balls here a ball here i didn't put like um because i've done designed an intake like this before and because this is like i i ripped this off of the design from one of our kids that one of our kids came up with this year for on 2220 um so like you'll notice like if i start throwing in balls here and say okay i want this to be tangent here like this is why i'm not worried right is it has contact all the way through this right like there's okay maybe there's a little bit of a dead spot right there um uh, it's mildly concerning uh, but in reality what you're probably going to see more is that like because that's like a it's like a really tiny dead spot this has momentum coming through here uh, so we're not actually also that might not be uh, yeah that's probably a minor problem um, so when you design stuff like this you just you don't want dead spots like this and also like this trapped position like it's going to go either back and get kicked this way um where it's going to go forward and get sucked up by this roller so don't care very much um but the reason that i was pretty confident in that is the re so when i design in when, when i'm thinking about intakes when i'm designing intakes and i'm thinking about them this is the bit that i'm always most concerned about is this initial contact to getting off the floor once it's off the floor um you don't have to worry very much but you want to get it you want to get the game piece off the floor and into the intake and you don't want a dead zone in there because a dead zone here would be catastrophic like it it, it would just be a huge problem uh, for there to be a dead zone here because then it's like you can get in this position where you're trapped there um you're in maybe you have a six wheel drive here and you're leaning backwards a little bit and now all of a sudden there like you're just totally you have a dead zone here and you can't get it uh, you can't get your ball up into the robot and that's a problem so when you don't have a game piece that you're cool compressing two inches um oftentimes what you'll see teams do is throw another bar down here let's throw another roller down here um i didn't do this uh i didn't do this for a lot of reasons um the the main reason being that it's just simpler like this and on these game pieces i am absolutely more confident like I'm much happier compressing the game piece a little bit more than I am adding another roller and associated belting and all that fun stuff, right? It, it's just, there's a trade off there. And um, when we were testing this on 2220, like I didn't see, like it didn't feel like this was necessary. It felt like we just cranked up the compression here, um, especially against a nice compressible bumper, and you just, you don't have problems there. Uh, uh 
yeah, I think that's probably going to be, uh, oh, also want to talk a little bit about cylinder sizing. So in this case, I used uh, these three quarter inch cylinders. Um, these are a standard size from like Master, Bimba, or wherever your supplier is. Like you can find these anywhere, um, not anywhere, but like a lot of places. Um, I find like generally, I just I don't think that you want super beefy cylinders on on an intake deploy. Like if if you got into that position where you need a super beefy cylinder. Um, you probably have like the the mechanics of this are probably off. So I stuck with this. Um, these guys running at sixty psi. I can't remember what it is. So like um, the way that you calculate uh, ps like the the force of a cylinder is you take that internal volume um, and it's it's the so air is pounds per square inch. Um, so you calculate how many square inches you have in here. Um, when it's extending, that's just the bore of it. So pi r square um, times 60. Um, when you are retracting, you have to take out the size of this, which is a quarter inch. Um, so the end result on this, I, I think that these would end up being what is that? That's um, 3.14159 times or times 0.75 times 5 times 60. So like, I'm 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 not worried about this. This is a lot of power here. Um, three quarter inches probably good here. Uh, sometimes you run into issues there. Uh, this is very intentionally avoids, it gets really close to over-centering here, which would be a problem, but it doesn't. Um, and you kind of just have to keep an eye on that in both your deployed and retracted states. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, suggestions about stuff to design next, um, concepts you'd like me to explore, uh, always feel free to reach out on Chief or Discord. Uh, thanks, and have a good one.